Check. There we go. There we go. I'm a, I'm a pastor, so I have to have a microphone, and i got to be able to move, and we will take an offering in just a minute. Wow, what an honor to be here. Um, it has been amazing to get to know Brian and his team over the last year. Uh, and so many of our relationships, and so many of you that are here that know us, um, our relationships have started like it did with Brian and his team over an opportunity to serve together. And out of serving together, being able to link up and to continue that on. So Brian, thank you for giving me the chance to share about the Dream Center. Thank you for jumping in. He didn't tell you that he was one of those big sponsors for the Father's Day barbecue so that we could feed um, between the clients, the kids, the families, and the volunteers, over 400 people that showed up to that event. I um, want to tell you a little bit of the story of what got us to this point as the Denver Dream Center, where it came from. Um, how many have heard of the Denver Dream Center? You've been at something or you've heard a little bit about it. Um, how many of this is brand new? How many? Awesome. So we love telling the story about it. Um, I grew up in a small town in Illinois, uh, less than 6,000 people in my hometown. We were joking about it uh, in the room, um, the VIP meeting before this, that everybody that I grew up with owned a gun, but it was the shotgun on the back of their pickup truck. Um, it was small town, everybody, you know, no one locked the door to the front house, but if they did, you knew where the key was underneath the big rock closest to the door anyway. Um, so that's, that's the life I grew up in. My parents were public school teachers, um, highly involved in our church, but always had me at uh, moments and just solid family. My life wasn't the story of being incarcerated, it was never a drug addict, didn't go through that, but um, found this passion for God, and out of that passion birthed the um, desire to serve and to help. And then graduated college, and my first job was in West Palm Beach, Florida. I would like to say that God called me to the beach in Florida, but I think it was the beach that was calling me to Florida. Um, leaving the Midwest and flying down there, I was sold as soon as I landed in West Palm. But I spent a couple years there, and then my wife and I moved to L.A. We pastored in uh, California for eight years. And in that journey, uh, we were youth pastors and then became um, uh, college pastors and started a nonprofit um, because I'm a sports fanatic. And so there was an outdoor basketball court that I would, um, any time I could get to, I was the only white guy there playing. Um, but built those relationships, but I began to recognize that the next step wasn't to meet guys and to come to church with me, but it was to find out what they were going through, um, to have them over to my house. And we would barbecue and play ball all day long. So we started a nonprofit, built a gym, and just watched God work outside of the normal and traditional track of, as a pastor, thinking Sunday morning church. And I loved that. I found that there were people that were passionate um, that had resources, that loved education or loved teaching or um, had the ability to do counseling. And we began to, to work with that like crazy. And then we found uh, a ministry in Los Angeles called the LA Dream Center. And that's where, uh, for us, it sort of got birthed from. The Los Angeles Dream Center, it's a worthwhile um, project to Google and look up. They now are celebrating 25 years, but their story goes back to um, a pastor of a large church in Phoenix, Arizona that has a lot of influence um, had an opportunity to revitalize a church in East L.A., the Echo Park area. Um, and so he brought in 10 pastors that he knew were phenomenal leaders, could do a great job. And when he showed them the area, they went to Echo Park and they saw the status of the church. None of them wanted to come. All of them thought it was a death sentence and it would never work. And so this guy, Tommy Barnett, um, planted his son, who at that point was a 20-year-old white kid from Phoenix, into pastor this church while he was looking for the, the real pastor. He said, just go for three months and, and we'll find the guy to take over. Well, now 25 years later, his son Matthew has been the only and is still the pastor of the LA Dream Center and the Angeles Temple, their church. But what I loved is when we began to go down there and serve with them, they went and talked about audacious dreams and faith. Um, they went, uh, one day they were out for a walk in um, the Queen of Angels Hospital, the largest hospital west of the Mississippi. And in that hospital, um, it had been closed for decades. And as you can imagine, Hollywood loves shooting horror movies, right? What's more scary and freaky than a huge hospital that's been closed for decades? Um, and Paramount had put an offer in to buy the hospital um, for, for $25 million. And... Um, or $16 million, sorry. And uh, Matthew Barnett and his dad, as they were walking around, they saw the hospital, and they had this vision, this dream of what this hospital could be um, to help people, to relocate. And so they sat down with the organization that owned it and said, here's our dream, here's our vision. We see this place being what it was intended to be, a hospital, but we want to call it a dream center to help people. So they're like, well, make us an offer. They offered $3.9 million. They didn't have $3.9 million, but they offered it. They took their offer. They gave me a year. They raised the money. They bought this hospital, 16 stories tall, 
largest hospital west of the Mississippi. Nothing was up to code, nothing worked, and so they had to go into fundraising mode, and the city of L.A. would only let them finish a floor per year. So long story short, what started with a crazy dream, minimal finances, no programs. They buy a hospital, and every year they'd finish a floor, they'd move people in. They have a, a men's discipleship, a women's floor. They have a homeless veterans floor. And now, 25 years later, over 800 people live in the hospital. They've got the largest sex trafficking rescue house in the country in L.A. They go to the streets on Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood, and they pull people out. Um, they run programs all around the city. They move over a million and a half pounds of food a month. And through their adopt a block program, they serve 63 thousand people a month in LA. And the stories go on and on and on. And, and we love that because what, what we saw, we tell people our heart and passion is this. We pray all the time for impact and influence. We want to make sure that when we're serving in Denver, we want there to be impact. We want people to get fed. We want people to get housing. You know, being a faith-based organization, we want people to reconnect with God. But we also want there to be influence. We want our, our city leaders. We want our mayor, our police chief. We want Denver housing. We want um, our athletes, our influencers. When they look for answers and who's on the front line and who can we call that's for facilitating needs, we want them to still think of the faith community. Um, not that we're disconnected, not that we have to set up a pulpit and preach, but that we can go out and love people un unconditionally. So when we moved to Denver, my wife and I, we've got three little boys, not so little anymore. They're actually 14, 11, and 8. So the, the, the joy of my life is in not only doing the Dream Center, but coaching sports like crazy. Um, so we are constantly running back and forth um, from sports and life and, and plugged in all of that. But my amazing wife and my boys, uh, we moved here 11 and a half years ago. And, and Brian, our, our leap of faith was just that. We had a great church. We had a great nonprofit growing in L.A., but we felt like we were being called to Denver. Um, and the interesting thing about that calling is we didn't know what that looked like. And people asked us those great questions like, hey, um, how are you going to get paid? Um, how are you going to get insurance? We had a, a two-year-old, and my wife um, just had a brand-new baby, um, and at two months old, so a two-year-old and a two-month-old, we left Solar House in California and moved to Denver and just sort of chased a dream and an opportunity. Um, so for us, it's been 11 and a half years, and every story that I'll share here in a minute, um, nothing's happened quick. Nothing's been overnight success. It's been grinding. It's been faithfulness. It's amazing teams and volunteers and people that we just keep serving and keep plugging in and keep being consistent. Um, and so now the Denver Dream Center uh, officially um, is, is cultivating 11 years of stories, five years of actually being incorporated in an entity here in Denver. <laughs>